Masks in schools, required screenings, and a whole lot of flexibility. Just some of the themes for the upcoming school year announced this afternoon by the Texas Education Agency. Good evening. I'm Doug Dunbar. Good to have you with us. We're streaming live on CBS and DFW. I want to bring Brooke Katz in right away in our Fort Worth studio. I know you've been getting some details tonight from the two largest school districts here in North Texas as far as what they're planning. Tell us more. Right, Doug. And the theme moving forward, as you mentioned, certainly one of flexibility. I talked with both Dallas and Fort Worth ISDs, and I also spoke with a pediatric infectious disease expert about what all parents need to be thinking about moving forward. A back to school like we've never seen before. It's going to be difficult and different. DISD Superintendent Dr. Michael Hinojosa says the final plan is coming into clearer focus. Besides personal protective equipment like masks, face shields, and plexiglass to divide up the classrooms, they have plans for short shutdowns to disinfect should a child get sick. But as for how many families will opt for in person learning, it's still up in the air. Early on, we only had about 20% of the parents said they were going to stay home. Now that's over 50%, and it keeps growing with the spike in the numbers. Is there any possibility that we could be looking at a delayed start to the in person school year? Well, I'm not going to rule it out because that's been something that's been brought up and it's something we have to take a look at. DISD, one of many districts already planning for flexible options in line with the new guidance from the TEA. Fort Worth doing the same, releasing this statement in part saying the health and safety of students and employees remains a top priority. The value of trying to open back up our schools can't be understated. I talked to Dr. Nicholas Rister with Cook Children's. He says there's really no one size fits all answer to going back to school. Every child is different, you know, and you have to look at who your child is and the benefits they derive and their risk factors. Parents of DISD students have up until two weeks before the start of school to make the call, but Dr. Hinojosa says they'll work with you even after classes start. We're never going back to the normal thing we used to have, so we all have to tolerate each other as we figure these things out. Now, the one thing new to DISD from the TEA, the option of a phased-in return to campus during the first three weeks of school. The superintendent says they're delving into that now. They will have plans finalized sometime in the next two weeks. Doug? Brooke, I'm curious. So we get a little bit of an idea of what the new classrooms may look like. We all know things can change between now and then, too. But what about buses? We've talked about that of late, where it's obviously harder to keep the kids apart. Yeah, it is. And Dr. Hinojosa said that's a challenge that they're still struggling with. And it really just depends on how many kids come back to class. He told me if we're looking at 50%, there won't be a problem. But if the number is higher, getting more buses and drivers so that kids can properly distance could be an issue. Doug? And getting drivers back in the fold has been tough, too. Brooke, thank you so much.